the one the only the man the myth the legend the mace windu hoodie wearing playstation 2 hat reppin madman from i think new york mr maddie plays the one and only is reporting as of a few days ago on fallout 76's new update that he's reviewing i've heard nothing about this and yet i'm intrigued you know i've said before that bethesda game studios it's sort of like a lol cow. And if you don't know what a lol cow is, it's basically like an internet personality usually that is lacking in self-awareness to the point where it's entertaining, but not for the reasons they think. So like you you think of like somebody that makes um, music videos or something and they're really bad at singing, but they don't realize they're really bad at singing. But everybody's still watching the videos because it's just so funny to watch this person who thinks they're really good at this thing fail at it. And I realized that BGS games for me are sort of a similar thing where I like looking at the dumpster fire. I enjoy and find it in a sort of morbidly curious way. I find it very entertaining. It's the case with Starfield. It's the case with Fallout 76, where I'm just fascinated by the disaster and I just want to know more. Now, to be clear, I have tried Fallout 76 on many occasions, I've gone back to it after major updates. I've tried to do the narrative stuff. I've tried to play with the NPCs. I tried to play it before the NPCs were added. I tried to do all of this stuff. I have just not, like, I've never been able to get hooked on it. It's just never worked for me. It's always left me kind of, eh, I just, there's no dopamine that goes in. I'm like, honestly, I'd rather just play Fallout 4 again. I'd rather go play something else just because it, it doesn't do anything like well. You know, and I just don't have a friend group that finds the core mechanics and stuff of, of Fallout 76 particularly um, compelling. Like, I just I just don't. So they've still been updating it. They've been doing some new stuff. And apparently this new update is fairly polarizing. The description on Maddie's video is if there's one positive to come from America's playground, it's that I have finally come to a particular realization. Fallout 76 is popular enough to be sustained, but it will never over deliver on expectations. Interesting. Is it popular enough to deliver or to be self-sustaining? I guess they're still making updates for it. Does anybody actually, while, while I'm, while we go through this, can you guys click around and just try to see if you can find any player numbers or anything between the hat and the hoodie? I am dressed like it's 2005. And today we're talking about a game that certainly didn't launch from that year because when games are launching back then, they may have not been the best, but they were content complete. Today, we're talking about a live service game, my favorite, Fallout 76. We've talked about this game extensively on the channel. Now we really just dip in for every major new update. And I dip in every time with the hopes of loving this product because I adore Fallout. I have the Fallout bug. The new TV show is upon us soon on April 11th. All of the episodes are going to drop. I cannot wait, but this update isn't just any update and kudos to Bethesda for sticking with this game because anytime I feel 76 is on its last legs, I've made videos straight up saying I think the game is dead now and I've been completely wrong and Bethesda in 2023, I felt the commitment was starting to waver, but I had learned my lesson at that point. And in 2024, they have stormed back with some pretty massive content additions. Good for them. I think we all thought back in like 2018 when this launched after the reception it garnered, we were like, there's no way that this game gets long term support. Like, there's no way that this thing is still around in two, three years. But sure enough, it is. Brand 238 says 11,000 right now on Steam, average of 6,000 in March. Golly. So you're saying it averages six. I mean, that's. That's just on Steam, by the way. So it's also available for free on Game Pass, or rather included in your subscription. So it's probably at like, I don't know, maybe 20,000 right now. I mean, that's decent. That's pretty solid. That's not bad. Today's update, as I said, wasn't just any update. It's the America's Playground update. Finally introducing for the first time in the game's lifespan, a brand new open world explorable area to add on to Appalachia. So it's no longer just that base game map and expedition. Appalachia. You got to say it like you got, you got la uh, molasses pouring out of your mouth. Appalachia. That's how you got to do it where you go out and kill enemies, you could finally roam these areas, interact with NPCs, pick up quests, hopefully find some dungeons, all of that cool stuff, right? So walking away from this experience now, I can say for sure that I have had this 
spiritual awakening with 76 and realize that no matter what this game does, I don't think I'm going to be happy because it always feels like it's a half step away from where it needs to be. And in some ways, this update has really surprised me. The quality bar is definitely starting to raise for 76, although I know the standards for many are low. I know it's an easy target, but I think as someone who has played the game since its launch, really tried to hang with it, I feel like you can see the efforts there. But what I'm noticing is the game is big enough to sustain, but not enough to invest and try to push its growth it very much knows its place and so i have just come to that level of acceptance that 76 is not going to do any more than i hope it will and i'll continue to circle around for those updates but america's playground taught me something really important and it's not one of those typical <laughs> maddie oh, the update's not quite there yet no it's more like there are good things here but they just missed the mark slightly and i'll explain why so ladies and gentlemen if you're new here and you're into whatever's going on with Fallout, we're going to be talking a lot about it in April, that's for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, consider subscribing if you like all Fallout. Oh yeah, does the new season, or does the Fallout show launch in April? When does it launch? I don't know. Uh, yeah, go sub to Matty. Matty's uh, somebody I've done collabs with. He's one of the guys that kind of inspired me to get into video game content creation years and years and years ago i used to watch him when he was like i don't even know how old he was but like when i was 15 16 years old like i'm literally living in my mom's basement i used to watch his videos so i think it's this month he said april there's a lot of content i don't know my brain's fried maybe he did say i mean we'll we'll continue seeing what this update is i i just think Fallout 76 is in a weird spot because it does have a very committed fan base. I mean, let's be honest. If you're still playing Fallout 76, you're probably willing to put up with a lot, I would imagine. Yeah, I pulled it up on SteamDB. Fallout 76, 11,200 players. 24-hour peak was 12,000. And it's been at 11,000 player peak roughly since last week. So they did this update. Looks like Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night. And then it spot or spiked up to 11,000 a week ago. And I mean, if you look at the graph, it's really not bad. I mean, it's right around 10,000, 12,000, 13,000, 15,000. Like it had a little dip in like late February, early March down to 9,000 for a week. But it's not bad for what it is. I mean, for a game that I thought probably was dead, it's got a, about 10,000 people on Steam that are regularly playing it. So, I mean, with 10,000 players, a lot of those guys are probably buying microtransactions. A lot of them might be subscribed to that Fallout First thing that's like 100 bucks a year. Like, they they probably are pretty committed. But the question with all this is whether there's growth. And that's the, where I think Maddie's getting at, where there's not a lot of growth with Fallout 76. I think most people have their minds made up on it. I've tried Fallout 76 many times. I think if I was going to get into it, I would have already gotten into it. And I think that's true of a lot of other people, especially now that it's on Game Pass and a lot of people can just try it um, without having to fork over any cash. So I don't think there's a lot of room for it to grow. They're just trying to keep the current player base happy and extract cash from them when they can. But there's not a lot of growth potential. Um, unlike, you know, even something like Helldivers, I think there's growth potential. If there's a big announcement of like, yeah, now we're fighting on Super Earth and you can come back home and you're fighting through like actual neighborhoods and stuff. That I think will get a lot of people interested. Those clips will go viral once again on TikTok and YouTube Shorts and stuff. And people are going to talk about it all over the place. And uh, it'll be very, very successful. Fallout 76, I just don't think there's that much potential, especially being as old as it is. Fallout content. So 76, I'm hoping with this video that you walk away with a lot more information than many provide on this game because I feel it's an easy one to kick while it's down, right? It had the hurry. Damn right, baby. Cheers. Brenda's launch. It barely crawls out of 2018 and 19 alive. In 2020, you get Wastelanders, and it felt like there it was a window. The masses had started to believe again. It felt like this was an answer to what Bethesda needed to do for 76 in the first place, which was make an online PvE game effectively. And each update since then has added to that. They've focused more and more on PvE content, more and more on questing. And so here with America's Playground, we finally get our first open world area, something I've been asking for since 
the game really first came out. It seemed like such an obvious thing to do. Now, before this, we last talked about 76 in December mm -hmm. and how they introduced new expeditions to the game. And these, for those who have never played 76, are gigantic raids, effectively. They're shooting galleries. And this was definitely the prettiest one that 76 had produced. You can say what you will about this game, but I... But even that, like, this is this is why I haven't been able to play Fallout 76. Look at, look at the footage that's on screen of the bullet. Galleries. Okay? And this was definitely the... So like watch when the bullet hits versus when the damage is actually calculated and when they they die so fired hit one so you see like it's instantaneous the bullet hasn't traveled yet but it's already registered damage now it hits it and so then that uh another oh the the shell just appears there it goes it's flying out and then we fire again where did that next wave of damage come from? Okay. But the bullet comes again. So fire. Bullet traveling this time. I guess it misses. And then another bullet's fired. Okay. Wait for it. And then fire. Bullet registers damage, but it hasn't actually traveled from the gun. It's still right here. It hasn't traveled to the model yet, but damage has been calculated. And then the bullet travels and then makes contact. There's the bullet or the, the blood spray and then the character dies. So when you're actually playing it, it just feels like the whole thing is super delayed because the damage is calculated at a different time from when the bullet actually makes content or contact. And so it drives you crazy. And for me, like Fallout 4 doesn't have that problem. Uh, even Starfield doesn't have that problem. It's just a Fallout 76 thing from them trying to rework the, the creation engine Frankenstein mess into uh, an online engine. And it just doesn't work that well. Shooting galleries. It's like, now that I pointed it out, watch the delay in real time of it happening. This was definitely the prettiest one that 76 had produced. You can say what you will about this game, but I will. Because you shoot, the health bar drops, and then there's a slight, like, tenth of a second, fifth of a second, and then she falls back. It's just ever so slightly delayed, but when you're playing it, your monkey brain can pick up on those little bitty things, and it makes the whole game feel really sluggish. It's really frustrating always defend its art direction anytime i fire this game up i am pulled into that world and certainly when it comes to atlantic city and its music and its appearance the neon signs everything about it the noir feel like they really nailed it so being able to explore that initially was awesome the quest starts off with you going to one of the many train stations reading about this little show that's going on at this opening bar so you head over to the bar you have Probably one of the most hilarious openings to a Fallout quest I have seen. I can't listen to this baloney no more. Let's light this place up. God damn it. Everyone does. <laughs> like this dude just okay. had it. He, he That's a little funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Emil Pagliarulo special. <laughs> He's like, how do we start this quest out? Let's create it in a really compelling way. I know he didn't work on this. It's B BGS Austin, but still, it's funny to just think of like somebody trying to do something really serious, and that's the product. I, I obviously they were trying to be funny, but still, it's funny to think of that as like a really serious intro to a story. I was not feeling the music here, and so I authentically laughed at that for a couple minutes. I thought that was some great stuff there. And from there, you learn that one of the Russos is hooked on the devil's blood. This is a brand new chem that was introduced in Atlantic City. Uh -oh. The only way to get off is to get some in your system, and so you head out to Atlantic City. You're dropped into the casino district, which is one of multiple areas that you can explore in this game. And I did expect them to reuse the maps they had built for expeditions, but the problem really is in how they've structured the content. Again, one thing I'll always defend with 76 is its exploration. I would even go to the length of saying 76's exploration is better than Starfield's. I really do think they have something here in 76 where the wandering is good, the point A to point B is good, 
as you would in a Bethesda Game Studios game. You see something in the distance that looks unique and interesting, and you go ahead and visit it, check it out, and you're like, oh man, thank God I explored that. And 76 has a lot of those moments, so to bring that to a new location was very exciting because it reminded me of Fallout 3 and its DLC, New Vegas and its DLC, and the potential those brought to the table. And, and I would agree. I think it's better than Starfield's exploration. That's not saying much because Starfield's exploration was bafflingly bad. Uh, baffling in the sense that BGS was always good at, like Maddie said, the wandering exploration where they just leave it open-ended. Yeah, go get lost. Look for different things to pull your attention, to distract you, and just get lost. Wander about. And then Starfield, they're like, okay, that thing that we're really good at? Okay, let's not do that at all. <laughs> let's let's instead put them in fishbowls where they can see three things that are interesting and then wander for multiple minutes on foot to get to those and then we'll, we'll call it good and then they have to fast travel and load to a different section. So I agree. I think Fallout 76's exploration is better than Starfield's, but again, that's not saying much. Here in Atlantic City, I already knew the art direction is going to be great, so it was just about adding locations to explore so there's no new map markers you don't have these new moments of discovery is there a city map maybe there's not even a isolated map for this area which was already a little concerning when i opened it up because i thought well isn't the point to go and see new dungeons and interact with new people and track new quests so you do have this main quest to track. There are a few side quests also that you can track. But when I went into this one area that was a bar that hosts the family, that's where I started to have that awakening of, man, 76 is always just a half step away. You walk into this, what I would say is a beautiful bar, fully populated. You can hear all the chatter around. It's very full of life. Again, th that noir feel is captured excellently here, as it has been throughout all of Atlantic City. But it's just a bunch of nameless NPCs. There's no interaction. I go and talk to one interesting named individual at the top of the bar. And I get to ask him a few questions about the family. And that's nice and all. But there's no quest pickups. There's no interesting moment here. And you realize, oh, this is just a host probably for later main story content. Okay, got it. So you leave, you go on your merry way, and all of these maps that you've already played through, thanks to the expeditions, are connected through sewer grates. So yeah, you click on one, and it zips you to the other, and it's as jarring as it sounds. I, 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 you can tell this was maybe not a part of the original plan. They thought, well, hey, we can reuse these. And the reason this is a little disappointing is because, yes, it's cool on premise. Like, it worked in Starfield. We'll just do big load screens between. Oh, man. But what it says to me is that my initial gut feeling about 76 and how they were handling the content rollout here was correct, which was when they told us, oh, we have these expeditions and then we're going to give you America's Playground later because we have so much to give you. I thought to myself, I don't know about that because right now 76 needs an abundance of content. If you have it, you should probably give it. And since they were expanding the base game map where I imagine most of their resources were going there, I felt that this update was going to potentially feel more like this sort of shot in the arm like hey it's something right and it's a it's exactly that right like even though you can roam not knowing where you're roaming to no map markers or anything like that very few quests and interesting npcs to interact with it feels hollow unfortunately and it has like the life there but no one of intrigue to really interact with now the main quest itself mm. is entertaining you head to this show you dress up as a clown you can have a choice here whether or not you want to kill someone to send a message and it changes your quest ending you fight off in my case a bunch of clowns because i chose to kill this guy instead of teaching him a lesson in another way overall the questing in 76 has become much better not just from an enjoyment at least unique, yeah. sense but also like even voice acting i thought that it was well performed whereas that was something i was critical of with expeditions and here in 76's update for America's Playground, I thought they actually did a better job making these characters feel lifelike. So much so that the voice performances were starting to shine a stronger light on how dated the engine is and how, wow, they really need to have some updated facial animations for these characters that are much more expressive. Which is something I typically don't say about Bethesda. Man, it does look like Fallout New Vegas levels. Like, bro. I get it's an online game, but damn, look at this these guy, especially that are much more after expressive, this. which is yeah. something I typically don't say about Bethesda Game Studios game. So I think that is saying something about the wow. vocal performance here. 
yeah, the, the questing is great, but it's like if you're going to bring in this new open world zone, you've got to fill it with life. you got to make these NPCs more interactable. You have to feed more quests into them, produce new allies that you can bring back to your camp. The loot here is pretty cool. They have a lot of that figured out since the Nuka World on Tour update, which I was very complimentary of. But as you can see here, little things here and there, like overall the enjoyment yeah, it was had. Like, I, I didn't hate my time here, but I definitely walked away with this almost spiritual awakening, if you will, of going, man, this game just may never satisfy me. And I know what you're thinking. You've probably rolled your eyes or scoffed at your phone or whatever you're listening to this on and go, oh, my God, you're just realizing this now, dude. But here's the thing, right? I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that I love Fallout. I'm a gigantic fan of the franchise, and 76 is kind of the bane of my existence at certain times with how it's treated, why it's operating, and the conclusion I came to is this. Fallout 76 is... What a hideous carpet. Oh, my the conclusion God. I came to is this. I'm sorry, Matt. I am listening, but Jesus... And then look at the textures on the walls of this like wood paneling, but it's not like the proper. It's like they didn't even go to the trouble of properly ending it. The texture just cuts off there instead of having the box actually close off like it would if this was an actual like, oh, man, oh, oh, it's so gross. <laughs> I understand maybe they were trying to go for a decoration, but why is the carpet glowing? It looks like it's glowing what yeah like this they, they need a seizure warning for this man Fallout 76 is making enough money and having a big enough player base to sustain itself <laughs> kubrick has been beaten for the creepiest carpet ever jesus yeah oh wow with updates well there's moments where you're like oh we can defend the art direction in Fallout 76 but then you see stuff like this and it's like what what money and having a big enough player base to sustain itself with updates like America's Playground. But it is not big enough and growing enough to push the envelope a little bit and do something big and exciting and over deliver. You always get either exactly what you expected with 76 or in my case, typically a little bit less. And experiencing that over and over and over in these two, three, four hour pockets as I keep re-downloading the game, hoping this update is the moment I can sit in a video and go, Fallout 76 is fantastic. This is the direction. Keep going, Bethesda. But I have to accept that there's a player base that loves this and thinks this is awesome. And that is not me, clearly. But also that even with these updates that should speak to my sensibilities, it's not capturing the feel of what I love about Fallout. And I just have to accept that that's it. I got to go back to New Vegas 3, 4. Like I've been doing a quiet side New Vegas replay as I'm progressing towards this television show relaunch because I want to do some content around New Vegas. And maybe I got a bit of that old school Bethesda bug in me. But even looking at Fallout 1 and 2 where we're trying to do some content around that, I'm just... I'm just thinking about these games in all these different ways. And one of my favorite things about the Fallout franchise is how each entry does something a little bit different. But then I get to 76 and I realize it's just not hitting anywhere specific on the board. And it's upsetting because I feel, again, this update is exactly what I was asking for. But the fact that exploration, which is the one thing I've always defended 76 on and said like, hey, this map ain't bad. Like that's not the problem here. This sense of exploration is better than what Starfield brought to the table. Like, they got something here. The fact that when you bring us to a new location, it almost feels as if that's an afterthought to the point where we couldn't even get a little localized map for these new locations just says to me that this is more of a stopgap piece of content. And the only reason I would say it worries me a bit is we did have that leak for Fallout 76, which showed old Fallout 3 content, like DuPont Circle, I think it was. They had that in 76 and my fear is that they're going to channel a little bit of fallout 3 energy in 76 and you can't do fallout 3 which to me is like the pinnacle of video game exploration next to skyrim you can't i mean the pinnacle of video game exploration i, I mean i guess for the time fall 3 was very compelling uh skyrim i think was something else i mean skyrim it was a phenomenon but i i mean i think you got to say like 
Red Dead 2, probably Breath of the Wild is up there because when Breath of the Wild dropped, it was just a totally different way of doing things. But I, I don't know if Fallout 3 was ever considered to be like quite on that level. Like it was very, very good for the time, but um, yeah. I mean, it's, I, I do think they're probably going to tap into Fallout 3 and try to bring some stuff over from that and do it as like a, a little spinoff thing. Because it just makes sense. It's easy, easy marketing, right? Get yeah, people to try it. In a half measured way and be like, oh yeah, look, there's, this is the place that you did an expedition in, except now you can roam with it. And there are NPCs here and there, except nothing's really happening. You're just kind of following your waypoints for your quest. That is just as bad, in my opinion, as what the problem was for many fans with expeditions, which is they thought these were going to be zones you go to, like the pit, and you get to explore and do a couple of quests. And I just feel like now you have this weird in-between moment. It's like you got to do either expeditions or the open world zone. My suggestion for anyone from the 76 or Bethesda team who ends up watching this video is I would say pick the open world lane and add expeditions to that. But I would say bringing us to new zones with PVE content, if you care about like the true Fallout player who is interested in that content, then you probably want to focus open world, focus on exploration, focus on loot, and then add the expeditions on top. I think because I was introduced to this zone through expeditions and then went back again here to do quests in the same zone, except this time there was like no exploration, it felt a little sour where I think maybe if it was introduced in reverse and obviously this is where game development's complicated because maybe one part of the project was ready before the other. But I feel like if these roles were reversed, I may have had an entirely different take here. And that's the key with live service. It's about timing. It's about content introduction. It's about how you present things and what you're doing within these new things you are presenting. And I feel like either if you did a whole combined update where it was like, hey, we have this new main quest and we have the expeditions, come check it out. Or if you did the open world first and then the expeditions, I feel like it would have softened the blow or in the case of combining it all, I think you would have just had a real winner here because I mean, I, the order does matter. I, I would agree with that, but it's, it's also just a matter of pure content. Like the description of this little casino space or bar space that he's in right now, meeting with this guy. He said it felt empty, it felt lifeless. Well, it felt lively, but you couldn't talk to anybody oh, gee, that wasn't named, you know? But yeah, I mean, like this this bar is always going to feel uninteresting that he was describing earlier. Like you walk in, there's lots of people walking around, but it doesn't really feel alive because he can't talk to anybody. There's no interaction, there's no discussions or anything. So like that's always going to feel that way. It just will. Like whether this is introduced second or, or first, that's just going to be the consistent problem. So to a certain extent, I don't think the order really will change the content issues. Other things like the fact that the quality of texture work, the quality of the level design and things seems to be dropping at the same time they're growing more ambitious is just concerning and it's not a great sign. Um, but I mean, then again, they have 11,000 players right now. I mean, I just refreshed it. They are at 11,030 right now which is pretty good when you consider the all-time peak for this game four years ago uh, on Steam was 32,000 on May 16th of 2020. So they are at a third of their all-time peak four years after the fact, and that's pretty good. That's pretty damn good for a live service game. So the people that are playing this are very resistant to quality dips. They're very resistant to... <laughs> well pretty much anything that would normally scare somebody away so <laughs> i think that that's that says a lot uh and they, they might be relying on that a bit you know that might be a part like part of the consideration it's just like yeah we don't really need to put that extra effort into it we don't need to pour that much extra energy into it because the fans don't really care that much you know 76 players are really a different breed they scare me i mean they know what they like and i mean they're willing to put up with a lot so more power to them I would have left a long time ago, but they're still playing it. He took my thing. Red, red flag.